correct me if I'm wrong, you've been doing this for about four and a half years? Is that uh, right? Four or about five years? four years we yeah. kind of legitimized the business. Yeah. About three and a half years ago is when we started actually yeah. touring. Yeah. yeah. And before that, what was your experience with beer? Like how did you do, how did you get into all of this and decide this is what we're going to go and do? I was a consumer. I was an avid consumer <laughs> of beer. Um, so I was a travel agent uh, when I came out. So I came out to Australia about nine years ago. Yeah. Um, because of my partner, Matt, who's not here today. Um, and when I came out, he was in finance. And so he was in finance for 14 years. I got a job as a travel agent for four. And when we weren't crossing like ships in the night, we were avidly going out and exploring beer festivals. So we would go down to Gabs in Melbourne. We would go down to Tassie at the beer fest. We would go do things like that. And he wasn't a beer drinker before he met me. Whoa. I know, shock horror. Nice. He hates it when I tell this story. Um, he was much more of a premix kind of guy. Ah, um, that's how you get them. Yeah. And so, and, and, and he, when I came to Australia, he knew that I drank beer and he lovingly bought me a six pack and had it waiting. And it was Carlton Fusion, which doesn't exist anymore. It's Carlton Dry with Lime. Mm-hmm. No, I don't not. know what happened to those six bottles of beer because <laughs> I don't re- remember drinking any of them. Um, and so we started this progression of literally going in and I would just point to something in the bottle shop and be like, ah, yeah, it's kind of a cool label. So the next beer we had was Blue Tongue, which is not awful. Uh, the Blue Tongue setup is now at Fortitude in Mount Tambourine. Mm. So that's kind of a fun little link. Um, and then I, I went to visit a friend in Melbourne and must have had Mountain Goat on tap. And so it just kind of evolved, right? And then we start the fat yak and the hop hog and things like that and started going to beer festivals. We went to beer festival down in Tassie and had the opportunity to meet a lot of the Tassie producers. So Will Mm. Tatchell from Van Diemen's and um, Spotty Dog and T-Bone and places like that. And and that's when for him, that was that epiphany of like, oh my God, this is amazing. Mm. And the more that we started going to festivals and stuff in Brisbane and beer launches and things like that, we noticed that it was the same pretty core group of people that were all at, at most of those events, um, whether it was the people running the stands or the, the faces in the crowd. And we started to see that over and over again. I thought, you know, that seems like a really great community. So um, we kind of made the move to quit our jobs and start our own business and wanted to open a bottle shop um, similar to the likes of uh, St. John Craft down in Launceston. Mm. Queensland has really different laws about opening a bottle. Oh, you have to mm. have a full hotel license. We don't want to deal with that. Um, and, and to be totally honest, we stole our idea from a tour company in Sydney. Um, so Dave's brewery tours down in Sydney, shout out to Dave's, uh, his van was parked out in front of a festival that we went to in Port Macquarie and we were like, well, that's, that's a really interesting idea. So the entire drive back, we're like Googling, does anything exist? Um, by the time we got back to the Gold Coast, we had our name, we had our logo and about two weeks later we made it real and, and got online and bought the domain and did all that kind of stuff. So, um, and then about three weeks later, we actually met Dave uh, at, a, <laughs> at a festival down in Sydney. And we're like, hey, we're doing what you do, but in Queensland. And he was like, cool. And I realized now how awful that would have been for him. <laughs> like, how much he would nice. have been like, don't do that. But he was actually really, really supportive and helped us heaps when we were first yeah. starting. But yeah, if somebody came up to me and did that now, I'd be like, mm, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> And what have you found um, has been like the most challenging aspect of um, getting all this up and running? Aside from doing everything with your other half, uh, no, kidding. <laughs> I do. I do love him very much, uh, and we have actually where very, Matt, by the where, way, yeah, <laughs> know, we have very complementary skill sets. So that's a really good thing. Um, I think the hardest thing is just just marketing. I think any business is going to tell you that it's marketing. It's getting your product out there, um, especially. Because we're also based on the Gold Coast, there's so much focus on the Gold Coast of like, you go to the theme parks, you go to the beach, you go shopping, and then nobody looks for anything else to do. So I think I think just, yeah, getting our name out there. I mean, we've been around for, like I said, almost four years now, and we still run into people who are regularly at breweries. And they go, oh, I didn't know this existed. And I'm like, we've got flyers everywhere. How did you not know that this is a thing? And so it's finding that, that right way, whether, you know, the... the the message to get to get out to them to get them to come with us. I remember that one of the first things that Matty Cuthbert said when he came on board with Revel was he goes, making the beer or the product, whatever it might be, that's the easy part. It's actually marketing it mm. well and then selling that and ensuring there's knowledge about it. It's yeah. such a challenge. And 
a lot of us, it's not, we don't come from marketing backgrounds and social media backgrounds and it's very, very complicated. So um, we de Revel definitely shares in that challenge of, you know, how do you do that well, as well as make brilliant or deliver brilliant yeah. products to people. Mm. And I think also explaining the fact that we're not a pub crawl mm. Mm. and that we can cater to people that don't drink beer. So there are a lot of people that go, oh, my husband would like this. Cool. Well, why don't you come along as well? Oh, I don't drink beer. Okay. Cool. I'm not going to have the whole conversation with you over the phone, but come along and we've got a 99% success rate at converting mm. non-beer drinkers into beer drinkers, whether it's a ginger beer, whether it's a goza, whether it's a sour, whether it's a chocolate stout. And so it's those two things. It's that, that encouraging people to come along and, and reinforcing the fact that it's not a big booze up. Mm. Like, yeah, you get a lot of beer, but that's not what it's about. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, encouraging the partners to come along, the mothers, the sisters, the girlfriends who traditionally will drink wine and vodka and whatever else that's not beer and think that this tour is not for them. And I think that's that's difficult as well because once they're on tour, then they have a great time. Mm. But before that, it's that like, reeling them in kind of thing. <laughs> I, I would find it um, difficult to believe that there wouldn't be at least one beer out there that, that suits the kind of palate of someone who's mainly drunk uh, spirits or wine or just yeah, not had beer before yeah. or not, not wanted to drink beer before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people have that experience where maybe they've had a beer that was sitting warm on – you know, the kitchen counter and dad left it there when he went out to mow the lawn and they have a sip and it's not ideal beer and it's not at the ideal temperature and all of those kind of things. And that's the only thing that they associate beer with. And so you get those people and, and like I said, nine out of 10, we can find something for them. Yeah. Um, we, we had a woman, we tell this story all the time. She came along with a group of friends. It was a birthday party. She was in her forties, not a beer drinker. Cool. Got her a goza. Um, and the brewery at the time had a Flanders Red on as well, which Flanders Red is a mass. I don't like Flanders Reds, but they're just massive and like soy saucy and big and funky. And she walked out with a growler of the Goza and a squealer of the Flanders <laughs> wow. Red. And this is somebody who yes. didn't really drink beer. Quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> she didn't like any of the pale or the IPAs or the stouts, and that's fine. But she walked out with three liters of beer. That's fantastic. Party and juice. We'll, and will yeah. consistently <laughs> message us, like when she tries other sours, other Gozas, other things like that, and be like, look what I'm drinking now. And mm. that's fantastic. Cool. Maybe you're not into hazy IPAs. Not everybody will be, but mm. there's definitely a beer out there for everybody. It's like saying I only eat tip-top bread, right? Yeah. Or just one <laughs> white bread, that's all I eat, yeah. and I'm not going to open my mind to anything else. But half the problem is actually breaking the back on that concept and saying, you know what? Open your mind because there's a lot more different product out there. There's you just rye people don't and know. Sourdough right? yeah, there's and all, all these that. different types. And, yeah. and some can be stale, some can be fresh. Yeah. Some can be croutons, some can be fresh out of the oven, you know? But like you said, that, people that don't know. Locally. And and they're not gonna be the people that walk in and order a tasting paddle. They're gonna be the people that walk in and order a glass of wine without even having that conversation and taking that that you know, step. There's a little it's probably off topic, but there's an approachability conversation here, and it's um that's why like working with you guys is so just easy because you are so approachable and you don't feel like, <clears throat> even I as a brewery owner, if I asked a question about a beer I didn't really know a lot about, I wouldn't mind asking you because I know you'd give me a proper answer and not judge me for it, right? Um, same thing when people come up to the counter here. If our staff, if they like, oh, he doesn't know what an IPA is, <laughs> you know, and they start <laughs> laughing about it, it makes the person feel really small and they go, well, that's a bad experience. I'm going to buy a product. You know, we say to our team, there is no silly questions. Everyone, is, it's a new experience, whether it's their first or their next craft beer, you've got to treat it very special and explain everything with yeah. like legitimate care. Because if you make that a bad experience from the human side, they're never going to open their mind to that world of like great opportunity that is all these different products mm. that they're yet to try. Yeah. And you guys, I think you nail that really well. You know, it's Aww. that human element um, and really easy conversation. It's not, it's just, it's natural and it's informative. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. Well, thank you. I think w one of the things that I always say on tour as well, and this is something that kind of comes up that, again, might be a bit off topic, but I think um, there's, there's still about 80% of the people that come on tour with us are men. And, and traditionally, again, it's the, the girls that drink the wine or the girls that drink the sours. I'm doing quotation marks. Um, but 
I think there's a, a societal reason behind that. And this is my own theory. This is not founded on any stats or numbers or anything. But I think when you grow up and the only beer that you've ever had as a female is, again, maybe a, a warm 4X that's been sitting out or a warm macro lager, I won't yep. be specific, that's yep. been sitting out. And you have that and you go, I don't really like beer. As a female, when you hit that drinking age, there's no pressure to drink beer. You can go out and order a wine or a vodka cruiser or a white wine spritzer or whatever, and your friends aren't going to go, oh, that's not cool to drink that. It's a little bit of that woo girl, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's cool. We're having fun. I feel like if you're a guy, especially in Australia, that there's this idea that you have to like beer. And I think that, like, Carlton Dry did the whole thing, or Carlton, um, not Carlton, Canadian Club did yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. I don't really like beer. I don't really, I only uh, drink over it because beer. Of the over beer was beer. the slogan. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think there is that societal mm. pressure of yeah. you drink beer until you like it, yeah. right? If you're out with a bunch of your mates and you're 20 yeah. years old, you're not going to go be like, can I get a Cosmo at the bar? Because you're going to get made fun of. <laughs> have a, a vodka and something. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, right to, until you get old enough to not care what people think, you're, that you're not yeah. going to do that. And so you, you drink your way through the beer. So maybe you find that you prefer Carlton Draft to Tui's or a Han Super Dry yeah. or something like that. I did that Han Super Dry was mine because I'm like, mm. it's fairly crisp and mm. refreshing. Yeah. That was what I would... Yeah. So, so you guys would understand what I'm saying, and, and the women don't have that. So men are kind of almost forced to step out of that box a little bit more and more willing to take those risks and try the new beer that's on tap, whereas women are pretty happy to find the cocktail that they like at that point in time and stick with that and not, and not be pushed out of their comfort zone. So we like to push people out of their comfort mm-hmm. zone. And when we get a group of people on board that traditionally don't drink craft beer, <laughs> I always say, well, it might be a challenging day for you, but... The amount of people that do have a stout for the first time and love it, or people that go, oh, I typically drink pale ales, but this is this amber and I love it. Yeah. You're like, oh, rad. I lo- love that. I, I completely back that up because mm. half my group of friends, you talk to them about their first beer and they go, oh, no, I didn't like it. But then I kept drinking it. And, you know, I stole from dad's fridge just because, you know, going out the boy. Well, and then eventually you liked it because you drank so much mm. and, you know, you found something, your niche, maybe at a mm. teddy or a whatever, and that was it. Um, but there is definitely not that on the other side. And that's, that's that whole world of opportunity there for another 50% of the population to actually embrace different beers. But even, even uh, like Maddie brews new beers all the time and I've, some of them I've never had before. Mm. And like at the ESB and I'm like, wow, that's, that's so unique. It's so different. Even us, we're learning every day, yeah. right? Oh, mate, it's, it's an amazing experience. Like mm. going back to that, I, I drank spirits when I was younger because I didn't like beer and then all of a sudden... I started kind of getting into the beer thing and just picked a couple of randoms and, and all that kind of stuff. And my, my craft experience was kind of fairly average about five, probably six or so years ago where I drank a pale ale and I was like, man, that is bitter as hell and I hate it. I <laughs> don't like craft whatsoever. Um, but then it's just kind of like you, you challenge yourself. You're like, all right, well, there's so many different bits and pieces out there that to try and then you just go, okay, cool. Well, I'll just, I'll just get on board with this and, and, and tick away and all, all that kind of stuff. And then Maddie comes in and does these beers and, and it's just like… Drinking a pineapple goes the next. <laughs> mate, it's, <laughs> mate, it's like creating a rainbow. Yeah. Unicorns don't exist, but yes, they do, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, like, it's just some, some absolutely amazing things just that just can refer happen. just to Maddie as a unicorn? Yeah, I'm not sure actually, what happened there. Whatever, don't actually tell him that. He's still in Europe. He's in Europe. He's in Europe on a beer fest. So. <laughs> um, Researching. But, like some yeah. of the things that you can actually do with the product itself and, and beers, there's so many thousands and thousands of styles out there. So many different flavor profiles, like. And as a young chap, it, it's it's absolutely amazing. Imagine as a young chap now, you get to. <clears throat> we were talking to Geordie just before, and he said, um, "My, you know, my first beer was a craft beer. I didn't really drink big beer uh, or traditional lagers, and that's what I know." So a new generation of people coming mm. in, and there's there's, the, the, I think the pressures might still be there. Those kind of stigmas, I guess, um, and then. You know, a, a bloke might go, oh, okay, I'll try a beer, but I don't like that one. But now I've got this whole wall and yeah. I can find something that's really nice. And, you know, if your partner's there and they go, oh, yeah, I'll try that too. Happy days. My, my, one of my most favorite memories is, um, you know, firstly, my wife agreeing for us to open the brewery. That was, that was a really <laughs> good one. Good. <laughs> Thanks, the, honey. The second great one there, it was when, I mean, she does not drink beer, like absolutely does not drink beer. Um, I think I saw her with a Corona once at a festival and I took a photo. I was like, this is amazing. Like, she's drinking a beer. It's great. Um, 
and the very first beer we made was a summer ale and um, we poured it and Maddie gave her a taste of summer ale and she'd never had anything like that before and finished the glass and genuinely, genuinely enjoyed it. We're like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's like almost a double, yes, you can do a brewery and I'm yeah. going to enjoy doing it. So this is great. I've got permission mm. all around. And then she likes sours now And now well. she, we, yeah, <laughs> it's great. She j- drinks the Gozer and the uh, Blinovice and... Side of sal. She does love the sal. Side of sal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although we have been uh, sworn out for the same reason, which is when, you know, the, the bloke who's been married for 30 years and brings his wife along and she doesn't like beer and then all of a sudden we find one that she does like and he goes, why'd you do that? Now she's going to raid my beer fridge. And <laughs> yeah. he goes, no, she's going to buy that well, one she likes yeah. and yeah, put yeah. it in the fridge. It is an expensive habit. Have we make, you know, uh, drinking good beer. 